Greetings, YouTube. Last weekend, my wife and I finally had an opportunity to catch a showing of Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I'm a big fan of animated films, and I'd heard good things about Ralph. Um, and this uh, review I'm going to do is going to have spoilers. So anyone who hasn't seen it and doesn't want spoilers should probably, probably you know, probably should stop listening now. Um, on the surface, Wreck-It Ralph is the story of a bad guy that doesn't want to be a bad guy anymore. And he has convinced himself, or been convinced, that if he gets a medal that says hero on it, the world will turn up roses, that he will finally get the social status and accolades that he's always wanted, and the world would become a better place. In the pursuit of that goal, he almost ruins his known world. Um, and at the end of the film, when he finally gives up the desire, he becomes a hero. And it's fun. It's entertaining. The elements in the film are a joy. The animation, of course, is great. The voice work is wonderful. Um, I enjoyed the characters, the writing. Um, I love the fact that they sent up the Candyland game and turned it into a racing game called Sugar Rush. Uh, I liked Hero's Duty, the takeoff on all of the big men in powered armor and big guns game, you know, shooting the enemies that are endless waves of things that must be killed. Um, I enjoyed the retro ode to all the old uh, games, you know, Qbert, the fighting games, and Pac-Man, all of them. It was very entertaining. Um, and I want a sateen action figure so bad I can taste it, but I don't think they're ever going to make one. Um, but there's more going on here. Ralph has completely bought into the idea of ego and the Western, Western world view on status. He has convinced himself, with the help of the social structure he lives within, the people in the building that live there that he attacks every day, and then Fix-It Felix comes along and fixes every day. And he's been convinced, and convinced himself, that if you have a social status here, you are of no worth. But if you have a social status here, you are of great worth. And in reality, of course, your worth as an individual has nothing to do with your social status. Your worth as an individual has to do with what you say and what you do. That's what matters. Your social status, whether it's here or here, is immaterial. But Ralph buys into it. So he leaves his world, puts his world at risk, enters someone else's sphere of of experience, the Hero's Duty game, uh, gets his medal in the process, almost destroys another world, Sugar Rush, where he meets Vanellope, becomes his fast friend and a person he loves. And his pursuit, his egotistic pursuit of that medal and what the status attached to it means to him, allows him to be convinced to betray the person he loves, Vanellope, by the enemy by essentially the avatar of ego in the game. And when he gets back to his, his world to show everyone the medal, on the outside of the machine is a big piece of paper that says out of order and he can read it backwards because he can actually see the piece of paper through the, stuck on the glass. He's ruined his world. They're going to unplug the world in the morning and everything in it's going to disappear. So everyone's leaving. All the characters that he's known his entire life have left the game or are now homeless because of his actions. And while he's standing on the balcony of the place he wanted to be, the penthouse, that was his goal, and he's now got it. And he's standing there holding this medal in his hand. He throws the medal away in disgust. He frees himself from ego. And when he throws that medal, he's, he's strong. He's a strong guy. It flies through the air. It hits the inside of the screen. And the piece of paper goes... Doop. He breaks the fourth wall. And when he does this, he sees in the distance the game where Vanellope lives. And it shows him reality. He pierces the veil when he forgoes ego. 
he then rushes off to save his friend Vanellope. Um, and because of his actions in the past, his her entire world is now at risk. Both at risk from the from the avatar of ego I have mentioned, and at risk because he has infected the place with bugs from the hero's duty game. And to stop them, he has to create a beacon. And the beacon will summon all the bugs and the bugs will be killed. And the only way he can do this is to sacrifice himself. He has finally achieved that last step. He's on the threshold of that last step. And when the bad guy is like, look at your bad, your friend dying kind of thing, he breaks free from the bad guy. And he begins to plummet to his desk. He literally begins to fall from the position of status, the highest point in the game, towards his death. And in that fall, as he falls to his doom, he accepts himself. He steps over the threshold to enlightenment. He becomes one with himself and the world and the universe at large in that last moment of life. Of course, being a, a sweet child movie, he doesn't actually die. He gets rescued. The world is set right. The bad guy is destroyed. Um, Vanellope finds her rightful place in the world. Ralph finds his rightful place in the world. No one's game gets turned off. But there's more going on in this than just a kid's movie. Now, there were things in the thing I also found interesting. Um, if you unplug a game, you kill the unique people there. So the unique people have to leave the game before the game's unplugged. Of course, when you turn that game back on, a new set of unique people will be generated. So these games essentially create our birthing people. Real live people within a digital world that they're in. And these people don't want to be destroyed. So if their game gets unplugged, they want to be gone before the game gets unplugged. Of course, they become homeless and have nowhere to go. Ralph addresses that issue at the end of the movie, Fripp, by the way. Another thing I found interesting is that the bugs in the Hero's Duty game are not fully fleshed characters. They're not like all the people he knows. He's not like the, he's, They're not like the little people in the building he attacks. They're not like Pac-Man and all the ghosts. These things are actual malicious code that the game destroys at the end of every session. Now that makes you wonder, what programmer puts actual malicious code into his game. That didn't make any sense to me. Um, so the universe itself is kind of interesting. Now it also got me thinking, now they're going to make sequels. Wreck-It Ralph did well and it's a good film. I'm hoping they do a sequel. They could make two more films. They could do a store Toy Story series in this easily. And the second I would have that one of the bugs from Heroes Duty becomes immune to the beacon. And it founds an entire line of bugs that are immune to the beacon, and then they become a real danger to everyone. Fix -ix Felix Love gets caught in this issue somehow, and to save her, he ceases to be Fix It Felix, and he becomes the leader of her military forces. He's given up what he is in an effort to become something else. And Ralph has to go forth and find Fix It Felix Jr.'s father to reset his loved ones, Calhoun's life, and to show Fixit Felix Jr. the true path of who he should be. Again, on, on a deeper level than just an adventure movie. And in the third film, of course, they shut down the the, the, the arcade. And Ralph and Fixit Felix have to break out of their world and find them all a new home here in the internet. And then you would have a complete story arc from beginning to end, with Ralph and Fixit Felix together being heroes. Okay, I've talked about this film way too long. Um, I've probably said things about it that make no sense to a lot of people, and I've been reading into it for a, probably much deeper than I need to. My cats need to be fed, and I need to go lift things. So I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on Wreck-It Ralph. I thought it was an excellent film. It was enjoyable for parents. It was enjoyable for kids, and I think everybody should see it.